What's up guys, Wang here, and I want to talk to you about some ways that you can think better to win more often. To be an effective player, you don't necessarily need to have godlike aim like Tens or Wardell. Essentially, I want to help you with the mental aspect of matching up against other players and help you think through ways that you can capitalize on patterns that you can create or observe to win more often. This season, I haven't had a ton of time to play competitive, so my aim has definitely gotten worse, and to grind my way back up, I've had to count on my brain more than my aim. The mental game of Valorant is made up of patterns, timing, calculations, assumptions, and execution. All of these things help you to predict what your opponent will do, or predict what you think they think you will do. Being mindful of what they may be observing can be a huge advantage to you, especially if they have a weaker mental game than yourself. My first tip for improving your mental game is put yourself in your opponent's shoes and think about what went well or poorly for them last round and try to capitalize on what you think they might do next. Maybe on the first round they did a fast rush on A site and they bulldozed it, so maybe they'll try it again. Maybe they are going to push Hookah and then got aced by your teammate with a judge. Do you think they're going to be in a hurry to push Hookah again? Making reasonable assumptions based on previous outcomes will work about 80% of the time, and when it doesn't work out, you can always make up the round with a couple of key kills. This works both ways though, because while you can try to assume what your opponent is going to do, you can also take advantage of what your opponent expects you to do. For example, if I'm a Cypher on Bind, and I play a passive setup on B site, and I leave Hookah open for them to take, eventually they will assume that they won't meet resistance in Hookah. With this in mind, sometimes I like to stack Hookah with another player to surprise them, and on defense, this is basically an automatic win if your opponent runs into your trap. Usually if you give up Hookah for free multiple rounds in a row, your opponent will stop using utility to enter, which gives you the edge. This methodology works with any character and any setup. Lurking is another method of surprising your enemy, but if you lurk every round, they will find ways to isolate you and punish you for being alone. Make sure that everything you do is geared towards gaining value for your team, and also make sure your team knows why you are doing what you are doing. Sometimes I like to lurk in areas where your opponent will often farm an orb. If your team is pushing a site, say C site on Haven for example, sometimes your opponent will grab the orb at A long quickly before rotating. I like to wait patiently until I hear them tap on the orb to punish their assumption. Randomness and the element of surprise work magic for things like cypher traps, killjoy turrets, and even the positioning of sage walls. Another example of a power move is doing something consistently and then altering it just slightly to throw your opponent off. A fun play is to consistently wall off A short on bind as Sage, making sure there are no spaces. Do this for a few rounds, and if your opponent starts pushing B often, you can do a variation of this wall to leave yourself a space to squeeze through. Typically, I still place the wall so that the opponent hears the audio cue and doesn't get suspicious, but then I start an aggressive flank behind B. Little plays like this can give you an edge and can help you secure a few rounds in a game even if your opponent is way better than you. The reason why plays like this work is because your opponent assumes that you are acting the way that you have been and has no reason to think that you do anything differently. Surprise plays like the hookah hold or sneaking past a foe wall usually only work really effectively once a game, but I encourage you to implement these types of plays into your game as it will make your opponent paranoid and, in the case of the sage wall, they'll start spreading out more to watch for the flank and this will result in them not having the ability to make hard pushes onto another site. There are tons more examples where you can use your mental superiority to win games, and I hope that this at least gives you a good basis for consciously thinking about this aspect of your game. This is just a small piece of your game that can make a big difference for you if leveraged correctly. If you learned something new from this video, please make sure to leave a like for me, and consider subscribing to my channel for more content like this. I usually post guides or tips to help new and existing players improve. Thanks for stopping by, and as always, Wang out.